Hi, welcome to the Quantity Surveying Studio. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe for more quantity surveying related videos. This video is going to be about MEP systems. This video will give you a basic understanding of an MEP system, which is a very important part of the construction sector. So let's move into the video. Now, what does MEP stands for? M is for mechanical, E is for electrical, P is for plumbing. So basically, under mechanical systems, the HVAC systems, the lifts, all the equipments, all the high level machinery stuffs comes under this mechanical system. E is for electrical and under this all your low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage, low current systems comes. Low current means all this telecommunication, your Wi-Fi, your wireless networks, your telephone system, fire alarm system, access control systems, security systems. So all these comes under low current and this forms the part of electrical system. And the low voltage, high voltage, medium voltages are all the systems that provide the basic supply of electricity to your buildings. And under plumbing comes your water supply drainage system, then your fire protection system. So all these are what stands for MEP. Now why MEP is important? So let's compare a building with a human body. So if you see a human body, the structure of the human body is mainly the civil part of your building and all your internal organs like your heart, lungs, your stomach, your eyes, the spine, nerve system that connects all your organs, that interconnects all your organs, your brain. This is actually MEP inside a building. So both coexist, the civil part and the MEP part should coexist. Without each, both your body or your building is of no use. If you just have a structure, for example, if there is just a building structure and no MEP system in it, no electricity, no air conditioning, no water supply, there is no use of that building. Nobody is going to stay inside that building. Nobody is going to be comfortable inside that building. Similarly, if without a structure, you cannot insert an MEP system into anywhere. You need to have a structure, proper structure, and then only you can have a proper MEP system. So if you compare your building with your human body again, a human body without your heart, without your lungs, without your stomach, without your brain, your just a body is of no use. You're just like a dead body. So similarly, all these heart, the nervous system, the spine, stomach, the lungs, all these needs to be inside a human body for it to properly function. So without a body, all these organs are of no use. So when you compare a building and construction, you can understand why MEP is very important. Now I'll be telling you a technique to learn the concept of MEP system. To understand that, you need to understand three things. That is the source, medium, and destination. So if you understand these three concepts, you will easily understand each and every system that forms a part of MEP. So let's look into each one by one. The first is a source. Source, as you know from the name, it is like the origin. There should be an origin for any MEP system or MEP activity to start off. For example, an electricity. Generally, if a building is being constructed in a location, specific location, there will be a electricity board or government related utility that provides electricity to that part of that location. So from this origin, you need to tap off that electricity or if it is like the water, there will be a, a water board where there is the origin of your water 
it might be from a municipality level or it should it will the water the source of the water will be like from the sea or the ocean or the lake or some bore well so that forms the source so from these source you need to tap off into your project or your building so for that there are different equipments machines panels tanks etc that taps off these utility electricity or the water from the main local body and this transfer takes place the carriage of this transfer takes place through different there might be underground cables or pipes so this is the carriage part so all these origin the different equipment machines tanks panels and the carriage that is from the origin to the equipments or machines or panels or tank that is specific to that project so this two is in connected with this carriage and that forms the part of the source these three forms the part of this source for the hvac system generally it is the air that is the origin and for that there is no need of requirement unless it is depending on the system if it is a chilled water system again there should be a district level of cooling plant which is situated in that area which distributes the chilled water system to the different buildings or unless if it is just a normal ahu or a fcu fan coil unit or the air handling unit or just a indoor outdoor unit the origin is just the air which is freely available and that is mainly the origin and the equipments are the the different me machines like the ahus fhus so basically the source is more important for the electrical and the plumbing part so hope the source part is clear now let's look into the medium part now once the equipments the different panels receives this utility electricity or the water this needs to be distributed into the building so that it can be used by the end user so for that distribution purpose there are different pipes cables wires ducts that are used inside a building and again in this medium there are different fittings and ancillaries that helps in the regulating and proper controlling and monitoring of the system because if there is no proper control or monitoring then the electricity or the water or the air that is being distributed inside the building will have no control and it will become useless so there for example in case of a hvac system there are different dampers that is used to control the flow of the air then there are different fire dampers that are used to protect from any fire situation and again pipe fittings different branches goes through the building so if there are unions the elbows the t's that is used to distribute this piping system so that the flow of water takes place in a proper way throughout the building again electricity there are different cable trays or trunkings conduits through which these wires and cables move through and to have a proper distribution of electricity there are different again there are different distribution boards in each floors that do a proper distribution of electricity in each floor so this is the medium part wherein you need to understand the median the different types of medium that is used to help in the transfer of the system and the different controlling monitoring regulating and ancillaries that are used to have a proper distribution now let's look finally into the destination part now the destination is finally the end user needs to receive this system for a proper comfortable stay in that building so they need to get the proper water they need to get proper air the proper electricity so for that purposes there are final fixtures like the switches the lights the sockets grills diffusers the sanitary wares these are mainly the items that the end user are directly in contact with all these the source and medium is actually invisible to the eye of a end user they 
are situated in maybe inside different plant rooms or electricity rooms or HVAC rooms that these end users will not have a contact with. And the medium, all those ducts, pipes and all those wires are all above the ceilings inside the walls, which are invisible to the eye of the end user. So for them, they what they can see are the switches, the lights, which they control, the ACs, the thermostats, which and the grills and the diffusers through which the air flows. Then the sanitary waste where they use the water, where they dispose their, their waste. So these are the different fixtures that they are in touch with. So this forms the part of destination. So I hope these three concepts are clear. So if you understand these three concepts, then MEP system is very simple, very, very easy to understand. And it is easy to take off the measurements, take off the different items, get to know the different items forming the part of each MEP system. If you understand these three concepts. So I hope this video was informative. This was just a basic video. I'll be making more advanced video related to MEP quantity surveying. So please don't forget to subscribe and you can get notified to more quantity surveying related videos and that to MEP quantity surveying related videos. I am basically an MEP quantity surveyor. So I can try to give you more knowledge on MEP quantity surveying and also the general QS concepts. So please subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching this video. Keep learning. Take care. Bye.